Welcome to Rados Live. I'm your host, Rados. And the title of this episode is called Point God. Now, shout out to Baron Davis and the um, Point God podcast that he got over there. Um, I'm a uh, follower and a huge, huge advocate of the show. Um, I follow my point guards, you know, um, I think that I was a good point guard in my own right, but we ain't here to talk about me. Um, I just want to um, pay homage to some players that died and didn't get to reach their reach they, um, full potential. Um, Dan Wilson, Lynn Bias, Darius Brown. Darius Brown, he was murdered playing basketball on the court, doing something that he loved, you know, um, going to eighth grade, he was good. Um, I got the opportunity to coach him, and that's that. Rest in peace, Darius Brown. <clears throat> All right, so I got my top 10 list of point guards, well, point guards, <clears throat> and number 10, I... I got Brandon Jennings. What I like about Brandon Jennings' game is, you know, he was quick, fast. He could shoot, um, dribble, um, good defender. You know, he was the total package. He didn't go to um, regular career path, like going to a four-year university and all of that. He actually went overseas to make money and got paid and then entered the draft. You know what I'm saying? Just like um, the mellow ball. You know, school ain't for everybody. <clears throat> and that's just how it is. Um, Brandon Jennings, electrifying, explosive. And of course, you know, um, an ACL injury ended his career. So um, Brandon Jennings, this is number 10 on my list, and he left-handed as well as myself. So um, I like Brandon Jennings at number 10 on my list. At number nine, this player had to go the JUCO route because he wasn't recruited. You know, um, he's from Milwaukee, one of my favorite point guards of all time, Nick the Quick Van Axel. Yes, he's from Milwaukee. You know, he always played with a chip on his shoulder. You know, if you ever play high school basketball, you didn't have the privilege to have a seven foot center, a um, 6'11 power forward, or you know what I'm saying, a 6'7 shooting guard or none of that. You know, sometimes your center here be 6'3 and he'll just be a dog, you know, and um. Uh, you just going off athleticism, chemistry, and pure skill alone. So Nick Van Axel, he wasn't highly recruited by none of the um, major colleges, mid-majors, so he went the JUCO route. He actually went to school in Texas and walked on, you know what I'm saying? And uh, the JUCO had a whip. Then later he was approached by Bob Hubbins. Bob Huggins from the um, Cincinnati Bearcats. You know, he chose Cincinnati because, you know, people from the crib, they get to see him by him being a native of Milwaukee. And, you know, that worked out for him. And they had a whip, you know. I remember watching them in the NCAA tournament giving the 5-5 and Michigan the Blues. You know what I'm saying? I think they got cheated out a lot of calls. But um, Nick Van Axe was a pro. He was the last pick in the second round drafted by the Lakers. You know, he was the big homies to Shaq and Kobe on that Lakers squad. And, you know, Nick the Quick was giving motherfuckers the blues. You know, they called him Nick at night. He had an ugly handle, ugly shot. You know, Nick just had a game. So at number nine, Nick Van Axel, that's my man. So at number eight, I'm going with Jason Williams. I like all that flair. 
dribbling, the mixing it up on the court and shit, shaking, razzle, dazzle, all that half playing shit. That's what I like about Jason Williams' game. He shoot the ball on a rhythm and everything. And that shit, he be getting buckets. Um, he's an unselfish player and he's electrifying to watch. Um, Jason Williams is from West Virginia, went to the University of Florida, went to the University of Florida, and then he was drafted by the Sacramento Kings. He got to play with uh, Chris Webber, Vladi Divas, Peja Stojakovic, um, Corliss Williamson. They had a whip. They had a whip. And, you know, um, a lot of coaches, they don't like all that flare and flash and shit, you know. They want to control players and limit them. You know what I'm saying? Um, I coach myself, I ain't with all that shit. You know, whatever works, work. Just play. You understand what I'm saying? Um, Jason Williams, he got a lot of good shots because, you know, he could shoot in rhythm. He was mixing motherfuckers up. Boom, 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 boom. You know, he even uh, shook and crossed the glove. Um, Jason Williams, he went on to um, get rings with the Miami Heat and play along Shaq and those guys, and even GP. So um, that's why Jason Williams is my number eight pick. Now, this player right here, um, my father liked him, rest in peace, Pop. This player right here, if he was 6'7", he could arguably be, arguably be the best player ever. But we're not gonna have that argument right now. And I'm talking about Allen Iverson. Yes, another product of um, Virginia. Um, Allen Iverson, you know, he got into a lot of trouble. He had to actually go to jail for four years before he even, you know, got to commit and actually play ball at Georgetown. Um, Allen Iverson, we all know he was famous for his um, crossover when he shook Michael Jordan out of his shoes. I ain't disrespecting the GOAT, but everybody saw it. Go on you, YouTube and see it. Allen Iverson is fast, fearless, a good leader. He actually bought swag to the league, in my opinion. You know, with the cornrows and the braids and all of that. You know, one thing about corporate and management, they worry about the wrong shit. Allen Iverson was like, God damn it, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Allen Iverson's body. Allen Iverson is electrifying, fast, a winner, a good leader. He had heart. You know, he was the shit. You know, um, he played for Philly. And then he played for a lot of other teams as well. But, you know, we know the story of AI. He just got blackballed by the league. But shout out to Allen Iverson, because Allen Iverson is my number seven pick on this list. Now, at number six, this player, if I think he didn't get injuries, he could have been high on the list, but it is what it is. Um, I was in this movie called Blue Chips, and um, I was an extra in the movie, you know, um, I got the who, um, and Penny Hardaway was in the movie as well, a shot and Nick Nolte as well. Um, Penny Hardaway, he had the height like Magic, wasn't as tall as Magic, but six seven. Um, good court vision, unselfish player. <clears throat> he could um score in the clutch and everything like that, and he will dunk your fucking ass. Anthony Hardaway will dump your ass. But, um, you know, he had a knee injury. Um, but prior to that, you know, when Jordan was in his prime and Jordan was really good, Anthony Hardaway and, uh, and that Orlando, Orlando Magic team, they kept Jordan, they knocked Jordan them out the motherfucking playoffs. People, they, they want to um, sweep that shit out of the rug and not mention it, but it happened. And you know the one of the major re 
reasons behind it is because Penny, he was running a point, you know, and they beat the Bulls, period, point blank, simple. So Penny Hardaway is, um, you know, on my list at number six. So at number five, this point guard right here from New York, my man, Rod Strickland. You know, he was supposed, I got on to Rod Strickland because him and Ben Wilson, they, they would have been in the same class. So that's how I actually started following Rod Strickland. Um, there was no internet. Um, the news was minimal, but I read the paper. I read the top 100 players and all of that. And I actually followed Rod Strickland, you know, from his days at DePaul all the way to the um, to him entering the league and being drafted by the New York Knicks. One thing about Rod Strickland, he's unselfish. Um, his defense could be a little better, but you can't stick him up. He unselfish. He could get to any spot that he wants to on the court. And he will post your motherfucking ass up. He could drop that bitch anywhere off the backboard and it's going up in that bitch. Um, Rod Strickland, he had good leadership skills. Um, he's currently a coach right now. And he's a damn good coach. And he was a damn good player as well. So Rod Strickland is at number five on my list. He was a killer. Killer at DePaul, killing the league everywhere he went. You know, people, they want to talk that journeyman shit, but they don't want to never say how good nobody is. But Rod Strickland, that's my man at number five. So at number four, this point guard right here, heart, size, post you the fuck up, talk shit, talking about the glove, Gary Payton, you know. Everybody get got, but at the same time, Gary Payne can lead a team, good leader, good emotional player in the, in the locker room to have, you know, um, good mentor to have on your team. And Gary Payne had the style, the flair, and he also had the basic fundamentals of a point guard. You understand what I'm saying? A lot of people, they miss the lobs to Sean Kemp. They miss, you know, the passes to Detlef Shrimp and all that shit. They miss all that shit. You know, Gary Payton, once he gets your ass in the post, he could bag you down, left hand, right hand. Um, good, consistent shooter. Good free throw shooter. And can deliver, you know. So Gary Payton, that's my man right there. And number four, and um, if y'all don't know about any of these point guards that I'm talking about, you youngins, go YouTube that shit. All right? <clears throat> Number three on my list, John Stockton. John Stockton. He had the basic fundamentals of a point guard, good handle, strong dribble, give you flux, um, kept his head in the game. Um, even Isaiah Thomas and a lot of the point guards said John Stockton was like one of the hardest players to play against because he very seldom had any flaws in this game. He could shoot, score at will, pass first point guard, um, coachable, a winner, um, part of the um, first dream team that killed everybody that didn't lose no fucking games. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to John Stockton. He never got a ring, but he, he didn't go to nine and 10 teams and shit to try to uh, find and chase a motherfucking ring either. You know, he stayed in Utah with Malone and Hornacek and the guys. He was loyal. He was a good shooter, good passer, <clears throat> one of the greatest all-time assist leaders in history, my man, John Stockton. Now this player right here, he from the crib, and anybody who don't know, I'm from Chicago. I love Chicago. I love my city. And we talking about Isaiah Thomas. You understand what I'm saying? Let me let y'all people know some shit. Jordan is the GOAT. You understand what I'm saying? 
Michael Jordan had problems in the 80s. He couldn't get out of the playoffs past the bad boy Pistons. You know, Isaiah and them beat Larry Bird. They beat the Bulls. They beat the Lakers. They beat the Sixers. Isaiah Thomas beat a lot of people. He was a small player with big heart. He could shoot. He had the mental capacity to win and lead. He had the ability to lead and the ability to lead others. So Isaiah Thomas, you know, with a sprained ankle, he was lifting up the motherfucking court and they beat the Lakers and got a motherfucking ring. You'll be far-fetched nowadays to see a point guard and do that type of pain and have that type of passion to win. These new players right here, you know, I don't understand them, but I ain't gonna knock them right now because some new point guards that I like as well, but Isaiah Thomas, he's from Chicago. He went to um, St. Joseph's, then he went to Indiana, and then he was drafted by the Detroit Pistons in the first round. The bad boys ran the 80s. You understand what I'm saying? Jordan ran the 90s. And that's that. So Isaiah is my number two point guard. I think he's the best little point guard of all time, in my opinion. Shoot, mental toughness, good player, good winner, fearless competitor. Shout out to Zeke, boy. Now, number one on my list, Irvin Magic Johnson. Nobody ever played the point guard position at 6'9". His vision was unmatched. You know, Magic was a player coach on the floor. He is the epitome of a floor general. In his rookie year, even though he was a point guard, when Kareem went down, Magic was asked to play center. He was a 6'9 center in that series against the Sixers. They beat him. Magic was in the post on Moses Malone ass, left hand, right hand, and he could dribble the ball. His vision is unmatched. Leadership ability, unmatched. The ability to bring and make other players around him better, unmatched. So my number one point guard is Magic Johnson. At 6'9", he could post up anybody. He could get anywhere he wanted to on the court. He could get the ball anywhere on the court. Like nowadays, when you watch a series, you know, it's four games to three and shit like that. But Magic and the Showtime Lakers, they were sweeping motherfuckers. Four games to nothing. Four games to nothing. Sweeping you right the fuck up out of there. They beat the Sixers. They beat the Celtics, they beat the Rockets, they beat the Spurs. Shout out George Gervin, my man. But Magic is the best point guard of all time, in my opinion. He is the best living point guard that I've ever seen play. I would have loved to see the rematch between the Lakers and the Bulls if Magic did not contract the HIV virus. I'm not on here to talk about that. But I don't. I would have loved to see the rematch of the Lakers and the Bulls. Um, shout out the Bulls. I'm from Chicago. Shout out Jordan in the six rings. My man Magic, he got five rings. It's all good. So this has been a point guard segment of Riders Live. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Um, I'll be back next week with more great content. Another great episode. Thank you.